Yeah, hold on one second for me. All right, um, folks, we are here um, live at this time from uh, Northward Prison. We have some inmates who have reached out to us to uh, get some assistance and to share their story of what they say is happening to them in light of the COVID uh, pandemic. So, um, sir, I've got you on. I've got you on speakerphone so that everyone on the live feed can hear you. Can you hear me? Yeah, you're live now. One inmate that's being um let me let me just clarify what you're saying to me right now right uh so you have one inmate that is leaving now being taken away by um ambulance service that's my miss i have a concern here yes sir. So how many how many people how many people would you say are positive in prison right now with COVID? I would say at least fifty to sixty months. Probably wow. more if they would, if they test everybody. Okay. But right now this this block they have this block quarantine or they started something else on this block and I know more people out there not having tested. Mm -hmm. And other people are showing symptoms. Huh? Right. And you're saying that basically the concern, kind of you said you have about 30 guys there that want to speak to me, but uh, generally speaking, the concern is you don't feel like you guys are getting the medical care that you need. No, I'm just trying to understand what your concern is, right? So the reason you've called me this morning is you're saying that you guys are not getting the medical care that you need. Is that right? No, mom, we're not getting the, 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 the attention we need, mom. Mm -hmm. They just gave us two little vitamins in the car, bro. Mm. Wow. Yes, I have, I, I have, I was supposed to get a checkup two weeks ago, or not two weeks ago, but last week, Friday, I was supposed to get a checkup. Mm -hmm. I have a blood clot in my, in my leg, in my lungs. Mm -hmm. And now I cannot get any attention. And they say today is a holiday, but as far as I know, the hospital is no problem, no holiday. Yeah, I mean, normally the hospital doesn't close. Um, so you have kind of. I just, I voice my opinion, and you have a good day, mom. Okay. All right. Anybody else there? I mean, I understood they had about. Yes, sir. They want to find us up on our stock and bringing the sick on onto the bed and all that, mom. So where where you where you guys are um where you're located? That's an isolation block for people with COVID. That's an isolation block for people with COVID. Okay, so you have COVID as well. Okay. All right. So um, what kind of medication have you been able to get? Sounds like it's a lot of hello. 
Yeah, I'm just trying to um, understand in terms of what your concerns are. I'm just trying to understand your concerns for your treatment. So what 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 is your what is it that this, that's the problem? Okay, it's a lot of people wanting to talk to us. So hi. So you you you've been you've been in prison you've been in prison for two months. Yeah. Uh huh. What what are you in prison? What are you in prison for? What are you in prison for? You said you're from Jamaica. Oh, okay. So you were trying to smuggle ganja. Well, I, I guess I, uh, all right. Yeah. Hi. Hi. Afternoon. From Kim Abrat. Yes, sir. Hi. 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 Okay. When was the, when was the last time? When was the last time you went to the hospital? Yes, I'm yes, up, up this morning. I asked, I asked for some, some chest pain. And all know, you know, I've been out peeing in my chest for three years. Four days, I've been comfortable to in my chest. Mm -hmm. And I'm a diabetic. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thanks, ma'am. Check with them about this, ma'am. Please, ma'am. Okay. All right. Oh, hold on, hold on, Ms. Kitchen. Hold on. Yeah, yes. Yeah, Miss Ketron. Hi, hi. Sorry? No vitamins, no, I don't know. You know they're I not giving know. you guys any, any medicine is what you're saying. Huh? You're not getting med you're not getting access you to medicine? Me either? No, no, no. You're you're not getting any access to medication? No, 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 no vitamins. You know, I feel like I die now. Mm, sounds like a lot of people are coughing, yeah. yeah my chest tight and I got asthma and thinking. Oh my gosh. Um, let me ask you a question. Are any of you guys vaccinated? Why didn't you get vaccinated? Did you were you told that it could help you? Oh well, if 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 it kills you in the short term, the long term side effects not gonna matter. I say if it kills you in the short term, the long term side effects won't matter. <laughs> hold on, hold on, Jordan, what's up, yo? Ay, 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 what a hot mess. Good, good afternoon, ma'am. Hi, good afternoon, sir. Um, Ms. Keachon, I, yes, sir. Want, I, I want um, the, the public to know, right, ma'am, that mm -hmm. a few weeks ago, or a mm -hmm. few months ago, they were published in the paper mm -hmm. about this domestic incident that the police asked the court to implement this order. Now, I have been in custody now going into six months, remanded. And it's basically a restraining order. Mm -hmm. But it was it's against my woman will and against my will. Now, I've been in here for six months, ma'am. Mm -hmm. And while I'm in here now, I did I managed to catch the COVID. Mm -hmm. And I really don't believe that this is very, as a matter of fact, I'm trying to get I'm trying to talk to my lawyer as far as seeing if there's infringements against my human rights, which I personally believe that mm -hmm. there are, they are. Because mm -hmm. like I said, it's basically a restraining order. Right. It's against my woman's will and against my will. Since being up here, they've blocked my woman contact. I can't get visits with my woman contact and, and whatever. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, you know, and, and right now I am being actually punished by having COVID because I'm being segregated from, well, majority of the population mm -hmm. and I, I don't i don't think that this is right mom I, i'm you know so so basically you have some kind you're in there for some sort of a domestic situation Sorry, mom, I couldn't hear you. no i i said i said you're in prison for domestic a, a situation then 
Yes, um, okay. I'm court. It's the Supreme Court order. Right. It was Oxford by an officer of the uh, MOSH unit or the Farmer Support Unit. Right. Okay. It was okay. Oxford by the officer. Yes. And it was added by um, the, 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 the presiding judge. Mm-hmm. So I don't really want to call names, but it wouldn't be hard to find out exactly what yeah. officer. Because like I said, they had it written well, up in the, in the news. Yeah. Of you. I think it was roughly about a month and a half ago, two months ago. Mm-hmm. They had they published it in the paper. And they were saying that, you know, that the officers stepped in to take action on, on their own behalf and on their own beliefs. Mm-hmm. And like I said, Mom, I am I am being, I am put in prison for a breach of an order. I mean, not even a real criminal act, but just they say that I'm not supposed to go to this person yard. And I went and I, I haven't been convicted of anything or anything. They just mm-hmm. put an order in place and told me that I'm not supposed to go there. And yeah. they came and arrested me for going there. Well, you, like said, well that's... Like, did did no one not tell you if you breach the order that would be the consequence? Because you can't go to jail for breaching an order, so you have to be very careful. No one explained that to you. I'm sorry, but can you really break it up? Yeah, no, I said no one explained to you that if you breached an order, the consequence would be jail. Nobody told you that. Yes, ma'am. That's basically yes, ma'am. That's what my lawyer told me. I, I, wow. I got a copy of the order. Yeah. And I can get up to two years imprisonment or up to ten thousand dollar fine or both. And I mean, I mean, you know, I, I doesn't. I, it, it, it's not even a criminal act. I just breached an order, which the order. No, but once you once you breach it, that becomes the criminal act. You see. So I think there's a little bit of. Yeah, I think what once you breach an order of the court, you commit a crime. So you probably didn't get that explained to you fully. Well, Mom, I really, I really would like the public to look into this and investigate this because I, I'm not getting very much assistance. Personally, mm-hmm. being a poor person and having to go through legal aid and whatnot. But like I said, I'm pretty sure that this is some form of infringement of my, of my human rights. Like mm-hmm. I said, just the lady that they have me um, saying that I can't go wrong, go wrong. I've been, in, I've been in a relationship for, with her almost six years. Mm-hmm. And I am, you know, I am in custody for, for breaching this order. And now I'm in here with COVID and I can't get out. I, it's almost six months and I haven't even gone to trial yet. So mm-hmm. something something is very wrong with this, this, this case, Mom. Mm-hmm. And I don't know how to say the public to know that. All I right. So, so you're, you're COVID positive as well. All right. I'm positive for COVID. Yeah. Well, of course, as long as you're positive, you can't come out of prison. So you can't go to court right now either. Okay. Well, maybe you need to reach out to um to Mr. Grimwood because you know your lawyer is the one who should be for for court related matters. Your lawyer is definitely the one who needs to be advocating on your behalf. All right, but let me just get one. Yeah. Out of the public, uh, I, if if I have to get and I get out of here, I will I will inquire into it further. I will make it be known exactly to all of the details because right. there's no way in the world that this is right, Mom. Yeah. No okay. Way in the world. And home, I'll, I'll let you go now, yes, sir. There. A few other that want all right. Okay. Mom, yes. So yeah. All right, then. All right. Bye-bye. All right, folks. So, um, what, one moment. I'm just gonna update our listeners on, on what we're doing here. Okay. Just give me one second. Um. So, to everyone listening to the program, we got a phone call from prison. Yeah. Okay. 
Yes, ma'am. And I, I guarantee you, I guarantee you, our next problem is going to be that this problem is going to put me, they're probably going to put me in trouble for this because they don't want us to be doing nothing like this. But I know how I think it's right for people to know what's going on with us up inside here. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, we might get in trouble for what we're doing, but we think that it's right for people, for our families and everybody to know what's going on with us. Mm -hmm. Um, what, yes, um, I, I'll call you back because I do have a few questions that I want to ask you. So I'll, I can call you back on this number. Um, no, ma'am, you can't call about this number. Oh. You can call. You can call my uh, my uh, Jolie. You can call my uh, Jolie. She left your voice message on your phone yesterday. Oh, okay. I'm not sure. I have to look through the messages. But yes, um, uh, you want me to give you, you want me to give you a number? Uh, you you can uh, are you able to text it to me because you're on air right now so I don't want you to give out somebody's uh, number publicly but okay okay I, 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 yeah I'll call you back in like in like 10 15 minutes all right okay all right okay. thank you very much all right, right my dear all right folks so um I know it was a little bit confusing to understand what was going on there so let me try to see if I can bring everybody up to speed I got a phone call first I got a message from someone saying that the prisoners have been trying to reach you. Um, I'm not sure uh, why they were unable to get through, but um, this person said that they were trying to reach out to me because they have some concerns about how they're being treated in prison. So uh, shortly after that, I did receive a um, I did receive a phone call, as you can see, from prison, and apparently that gentleman uh, who was calling with his, I guess, prison credit is on an isolated block that um, has at least 30 prisoners that are COVID positive. So they seem to have different concerns. And I know some were kind of a bit all over the place and certain things obviously are with the court and we can't really, we're not lawyers here to give them legal advice. But um, the primary reason why they were calling and the primary concern is that they don't feel like they're being listened to. So as they call, they were calling to say, the ambulance is here. And they are taking a patient to the hospital as we speak. One second. Yes, hello. Hello, is this Andrew Gaten? Yes, sir. Yes, Miss Winnie. Um, the COVID, the COVID up in the prison. Uh huh. They have a sitting duck. Yes. Right? Uh huh. And then uh, nobody, no wearing no mask, and everybody dropping down, catching COVID and sick out, and then they releasing none of us, an early release or nothing. Are you you're in prison at the moment? Right. Right now, so let me let me just ask you, um, you know, obviously COVID is is in the community as well. What measures were they taking to try to you said they weren't giving you guys any mask to wear? Did they give oh, you any kind mask, of like man, the, uh -huh. the mask not helping one? Well, it, people don't, people you're in such close quarters, mask, right? Yeah. Um what, what, what are you trying to say the place too crowded, the the prison too full. Mm hmm Yeah. Wow. So you're you're and you're on the positive block as well. You're on the COVID positive block. No, no, I don't got I don't got it yet. You don't have it yet. But, okay. But they got me. They got me waiting sitting ducks one. You feel I like you're you feel like you're a sitting duck. Right. Yeah. So I, I need to get early release. I got one leg and thing, and they got me off in ya. What are you in prison for? Can I ask what you're in prison for? I I in prison for um defending myself one. Defending yourself. What what was the charge? Assault? Um, no, GBH? GBH. Okay. Yeah. All right. So, Taylor, man. Who is this? Ronaldo Taylor. Ronaldo? Yeah. Okay. All right. So you find yourself, what, what kind of sentence did you get? I get three years, man. Wow. And how much of that have you served? Um, Like, well, 14 months. Okay, so you might be coming up close on your 60% anyway. Yeah, yeah, so we reached my 60%, but I need early release because the place is too crowded, you understand? And mm -hmm. I got one leg and thing, the place is crowded, so they need, and I've been behaving myself, so they need to release me on no one. Oh, somebody said you would attack your dad. That was. Attack, no, man, no, man, no, man, attack me, man. No, no, my dad, my stepfather, man. Oh, you're the fella from East End, the little young man. Northside. Northside. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay, okay, okay. Now I know. Oh, wow. Yeah. Mm, right, right, right. So now you're afraid of COVID. You're, you sound like you're more afraid of COVID than you were afraid of that jail sentence, man. COVID getting real yeah, up in the prison. COVID, the COVID up in your body, man. People, and then through our immune system, not so strong up here because of food and things. 
And yeah. the man them in the kitchen got COVID and thing and they they cook your food first with COVID and they got COVID. They're not good first man. So we know we we don't really want to eat the food. You understand? We be dashing away the food and thing. What? Because all the man in the kitchen getting positive for COVID. So I hear that some twenty something in um prisoners, prison officers, sorry, um, actually have COVID as well. So that's yeah, who's... prison officers catch it as well, man. Yeah. I'm bringing it in up in you. Oh gosh. So that's who's cooking. Sorry. That's who's cooking your food. I, over twenty three officers have COVID. Um, Delta yeah. Block is being used as a quarantine for all positive prisoners. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so what do you what do you think other than early release? Because a prison can't let everybody out, as you can appreciate, right? Some people are in there for very serious offenses. What do you think could be? What else could be done to try to improve the situation at this time? Wait. You sir, hello. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm just I saying. Need, one thing I need doing. Uh, I need I need um big up my number so people can put credit on my number now. Uh. Young man, nobody not gonna be sending you no prison credit. Listen, yeah, listen. Jail, jail bait. Hold on now. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Now. Listen, I'm trying. We're trying to help. We're trying to help you on a serious note, right? To bring this yeah. to the attention of the people who can do something differently. So my question to you is, if they can't yeah. let you out, which everybody can't come out of prison early, you know that's not gonna happen, right? The people with short sentence, they talk in one. What what else can be done? Even if you get a short sentence, you know, the whole idea behind sending somebody to prison is so that you learn a lesson. So you only got served 60% anyway. Not like you're serving 100% or 90%. So let's work with this 60%. That's early release date, right? What else yeah. do you think could be done? Why aren't you guys getting vaccinated in prison? Let me ask you that question. Are you vaccinated? No, I never vaccinated. Why? Most of them vaccinated? Yeah, yeah. You sure? Yeah. All right. You don't sound but too sure about that. But yeah. Come off, you know. All right. All right. What a hot mess. Um. So Richard, that was the question as well. They take advantage of what's being offered to them in terms of vaccination. Um. You all know whether they're prisoners or not. They get the cold hard truth from me. Uh, I don't believe in being soft with people. So not, when he started to tell me who he was, I remember that incident because we were the ones who broke that news. That was quite a vicious attack, actually. And he's lucky he didn't get charged with attempted murder because initially people thought that he actually killed his stepfather. So <laughs> CC says, Sandy going straight to hell today about nobody sending you jail, credit jail bait. No, come on now. I mean, you know, yeah, you're not going to be getting no phone credit. But listen, listen to me. Um, on the one hand, this is a very serious discussion because if they're not getting the proper treatment that they need, so what was revealed today is that an inmate, it was they had to call the ambulance for him. Now, listen, there's a real argument here that if inmates are not getting the proper treatment, they said they're not being given medication, the nurse can't come and see them, they're being told that today's a holiday, so there's no nurse available. When you're incarcerated, there's no such thing as a holiday when it comes to central services. So even on holidays, they have to get you a doctor if you need one. They have to get you emergency services if, if you need one. They have to, um, you know, get you a nurse if you need one, get you medication. So those are the things, honestly, that concern me. Some of them are trying to plead their innocence on here saying, oh, they got thrown in jail for breaching an order. Well, that's what happens. Even if you're in court and you breach a civil order, that'll get you thrown in jail. So folks. I don't know what kind of lawyers they have, but some of these lawyers are not telling people the cold hard truth. They need to be prepared to explain to their clients, right? The judge made an order. Don't go by this woman. I don't care if you've been dating her for 60 years, much less six years. If you go by her, it just sounds like some kind of domestic mix up situation, domestic violence, domestic abuse. If you go by her, you will go to jail. Don't play with these judges. They will send you to jail. So I don't know who needed to hear that message today, but it is what it is. Um, the Jamaican guy talking about he innocent. He wasn't bringing drugs into this country. You know, that's another big thing that we have. Unfortunately, a lot of drugs are coming into uh, this community. And the vast majority of it is coming from the shores off of Jamaica. 
So let's not let's not turn a blind eye to that situation. But whatever they're in jail for, I'm not here to plead that. That's not my business. Uh, that's why you have a lawyer. And hopefully you have a lawyer that is sensible and that can assist you. But making sure that they can get medical care, making sure that they can get, um, you know, whatever treatments they need to deal with their COVID symptoms, I do think is, is very important because COVID is killing people. We hear some of them are saying that they're amputees. Um, that young man, he only has one leg. One is, guy, is he's diabetic. Next guy um, has a kidney problem. So, um, you know, at the end of the day, they all, some of them have comorbidities, which makes them high risk. I don't know if the gentleman who's being carted off to hospital today falls into that category or not. But, um, you know, it's, we can't treat, and I saw Johan's uh, message about credit, like how can prisoners be calling um, CMR live? Well, you know, they have credit on their phone. I guess they can call anybody they want. And if they want to give us the provision, you know, we're here for it. But listen, on a serious note, we cannot mistreat prisoners, right? Because any, anybody could go to jail. Let, let's just be honest here. Some of y'all have done some stuff you need to be in jail for. You just been lucky so far. So let's work on the assumption that people make, they make bad choices in life. They do stupid things. Uh, you know, sometimes it's more serious than others. And so as them old folks would say, by the grace of God, sometimes, and trying to put a good head on your shoulders, you don't end up at Fairbanks or what's the woman's prison called? Uh, Fairbanks or um, Fairbanks. What's the woman's prison called? Whatever that one's called. Um, they're off of, uh, in Georgetown. Y'all know what I'm talking about. But anyway, uh, yeah. So listen, when you go to jail, we shouldn't mistreat them just because they're in jail, especially knowing that they're going to come right back out and become part of the community all over again. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of discussion around prison reform and how, uh, poor our prisons are now. Poor is a very relative word. Poorly operated, poorly managed is a relative word because, Compared to prisons in Jamaica, Honduras, and many other countries, even some parts of the U.S., our prison is a bit of a walk in the park, right? Let's be very, very honest. But if we're going to have certain standards, then we need to make sure that we maintain those standards. And in my opinion, the bare minimum is offering someone medical assistance if they need it. Tracy um, says being in and out of prison will not keep someone from catching COVID. It's in the community as well. Well, yeah, I mean, that's for sure. Um, you know, without a doubt, it is COVID is, is rampant in the community as well. So, um, Cece, Cece, you're obsessed with the word jail bait. Uh, some, why some of them think that they will come out in the community COVID positive? That's not going to happen. Yeah, I mean, listen, you know, if they're already COVID um, positive, then releasing them into the community, they'd have to go in isolation. And I guess the question would be, where are they gonna go in isolation? I mean, I don't even know how that would work. So they're gonna have to wait until they're no longer COVID positive. But here's the thing, the prison has done a dismal job and I'm just being very, very frank here. And I know the prison director has, has he left yet? He was resigning, he was leaving, but the prison as a whole has done a dismal job of communicating with the families of these inmates as well as with the inmates and i know this for a fact it's one of the reasons why months ago we reached out to them because we'd heard complaints from way back when with covid positives once the community spread started prisoners were complaining about it from then what was the protocol how are prisoners going to be handled right oh we have limited space and it took them forever to get gis to send out a little press release on how this was going to happen and that's where I have a problem because clearly nobody seemed to have had a plan of what was going to happen with these inmates once community spread began within the prison. They're in very small spaces. I mean, I don't know what the size of a prison cell is, but I'm sure it's not that big. And so the chances of them, no access to fresh air probably. Does, do the burglar bars and the windows have, is it closed completely or can they get any fresh air in? So they probably have very stagnant airflow in that prison, which means that, you know, an inmate um, comes in with it and didn't know they were positive when they came in. Maybe they tested uh, negative at the onset. Two days later, they're positive. Workers coming in and out of the prison system. Are they lateral flow testing every single time they go to work? 
there was this whole situation where a large number of the prison officers themselves were not vaccinated. Where is my water? I still need some water because y'all know that a lot of our prison officers are um, Jamaicans. And hello, look at the numbers in Jamaica. A lot of Jamaicans will tell you that they don't believe in vaccinations, apparently. I've said, if you work for the prison, you work for the HSA, it should be mandatory for you to be vaccinated because you are dealing with very high risk individuals. Now, it doesn't stop you, the, the vaccination doesn't stop you, obviously, from catching it, especially with the Omicron and the Delta variants. You're more likely to catch it, not as much as unvaccinated, but still. But every little thing helps to reduce the numbers. I honestly think all prisoners should be mandated to get it too. But here we are now, 30 plus of them saying that they've got it. And, uh, you know, they're all upset about it because they don't feel like they're getting good care. So uh, Preeti Tash says that's not true. Those who are positive are segregated by themselves and kept isolated. Everybody entering the pr prison has to do a ladder flow test before going to the compound. And if your results come back positive, you're sent home to isolate. The prisoners receive the same medical assistance like everybody else on Seneca in the community. But then how are they saying that today they're being told that there's no nurse available because it's a holiday? Uh, Preeti, Preeti, Preeti Tash, I'm pretty sure that if you're on the outside and you need access to a nurse or you want to go to the emergency room, you can drive yourself there. You can go to the hospital. Nobody's going to tell you you can't access the emergency room because it's a holiday. The emergency room is open. Doctors are on duty and uh, nurses are on duty. So, I mean, I don't know what's going on here, but I think that, you know, somebody needs to address the concerns of these prisoners. People call me out of desperation. People don't normally call me just because it's a joke. You understand what I'm saying? Um, I do have prisoners who occasionally call and normally it's because they're feeling very, very desperate about their situation. So um, someone says F wing is fully air conditioned. Does that mean no fresh air is allowed in? Because that's the problem. The AC vent, vent system, right, is circulating the virus. So one person has it, it gets circulated to everyone. Uh, someone says that it's over 58% of the prisoners have been vaccinated. What about the prison officers? Any statistics on that? Would like to know. Um, someone else says women prisoners, Fairbanks, men is Northwood. Oh, sorry. I think I was confusing the two. Right. So Northward is where these uh, men are calling me from. Um, and again, you know, they're all saying that there is um, at least 30 of them who are held up right now in one block because they're all COVID positive. There's probably another one. Hold on. Hi, good afternoon. President there, Mr. Hill. Um, yes, just sir. calling about the issue with the prison. Yes, um, sir. Number one, mm -hmm. they got unvaccinated um, inmates, right? Um, that just those, those who want to take the vaccination, mm -hmm. mix up with, with the vaccinated ones, right? Mm -hmm. um, and then number two, um, the virus have got other hand in the prison. And um, mm -hmm. we, we need a media like you um, that is... Uh, reporting um, on both sides of the coins. A um, mm -hmm. couple of months ago, Lisa, the able came up here mm -hmm. and um, tried to sugarcoat things, right? Mm -hmm. And she was warned, she was warned by the prisoners, right? Mm -hmm. That um, we, we basically in a bird cage, right? right. And an infection could come inside the bird cage. Of course. So, so the handlers that, that, that is in here have to be able to to um, take some CS testing, right? Because mm -hmm. once it comes inside of here, it is um, it's going to go with um, wind spread. Then turn around, um, she was warned about say maybe someone feeling sick. Mm -hmm. The prison always uses an excuse um, to give you panadols and and whatever. Um, and right now, um, the the, the virus has gone out of hand, and, and I think um, you. You, you, you should um should should send some emails to the ministry for a press release um in in regards to this um uh, basically we 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 don't want it to go political right we we just want transparency in in into what what's happening there 
Coins got basically unorganized. Mm -hmm. um, and, you know, um, the prison um, who's in charge here always um, is disorganized. Mm -hmm. like they, 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 they never never organized whatsoever. Mm -hmm. And there's a room, I, room I've been hearing that that certain inmates works in the kitchen, um, which um, they don't let came out works in the kitchen. So I, I'm not being biased here, right? But mm -hmm. that's the reality of it. Um, they say inmates in the kitchen also have the COVID. Um, and, and about three of them, they, they, they said so they, they, they would be considered non mm -hmm. um, And they, there is there is diff different issues within the prison that um, we, we think you need to be able to, to highlight um, for us because mm -hmm. the phones in the prison is blocked from, from calling any, any government ministries, any government departments, and um, this will be some sort of transparency. So, so thank God for, for a media house like came on my road that mm -hmm. prisoners could call direct and um and it it, it, it no no blockage mm -hmm. um into communicating with the outside world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So so I think the prison ha have to um be transparent and um and, and we would like you to, to send an email to the to the acting director there um, Daniel Greaves and the action to be transparent with what is happening mm -hmm. um with, within the prison mm -hmm. and, and and what what is the plans to um, get this thing under control within the prison. And mm -hmm. like what I told them, instead of them giving officers by your suits to wear, it should be the, the, the opposite way around. It should be the prison wearing the bio suits getting protected from the officers because it's the officers who is bringing this thing in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And they, they cannot sugarcoat that. Um, right. Airbot is in here. Um, some is remanded, innocent, but for proven guilty. Um, some, some is convicted wrongfully. Um, some is convicted, um, and we, we have to live with the reality of it. Um, while we in the care, no matter if you're innocent, if you're remanded, or if you're guilty as hell. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. The, 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 the human rights say... Uh-oh, uh sound like credit finish. Oh, yo, yo. Um, I don't know if this mother phone is ringing now. I don't know if this is somebody else in prison. They might have both phone numbers. Um... <laughs> I'm not really sure about that one. Oh, I bet you that might be a prisoner again. They got both my numbers, y'all. Um, but no, I mean, that young man was making good sense in terms of, um, you know, when it comes to their care folks. Um, I think that they they need some answers and that I agree with. Um, apparently he's saying that, um, you know, numbers are blocked so they can't get through to anyone within government. And so that's why I guess they're trying to reach out. Um, let me see. That's why they're trying to reach out to me. Let me just see if this is. Um, child, I don't know. I don't know who. Okay, that one wasn't in me. That was a paying customer. <laughs> All right, folks. Uh, yes, Jonathan, um, inmates have been calling us here at CMR. They're saying that we are uh, their only hope today um, for some sort of attention to be brought and highlighted um, to this situation. I'm hoping that this will help. We find that sometimes, uh, I didn't know that Mr. Greaves was acting prison director, so that's good to know because we can definitely reach out to him now for some answers. But I think a lot of times what happens is um, the prisoners, when they do try to reach out to us, as they have in the past, um, they're placed in lockdown and there is a bit of retaliation against them. And my thing is, we've seen the prisoners uprise before. Um, my ex used to be a prison officer. I have seen, you know, we all remember the stories back in the, was that the early 2000s when they were writing? Uh, that was not a good, good situation here in the Cayman Islands. So let's listen to them. Right. They, they deserve a voice just like everybody else in the community. Uh, like I said, when it comes to the details of their cases, whether they're innocent, guilty, whatever, those types of things um, are going to be adjudicated in a court of law. So we have to wait until that's done on air right now. Hello. OK. 
Yes. Okay. Yep. Okay. All righty. <laughs> um, so sorry about that. My phone just ring off. But so um, yeah, I mean, then they're punished, right? And I think to myself, um, they deserve to be heard. I mean, if, if the prison is being ran professionally and operating well, you know, I know that there's certain services that they've not had access to for quite some time now. The training manager has been uh, suspended or fired for the past two years while government is trying to work that situation out. And that's now being litigated because they haven't been able to work it out. So it's in the courts. Uh, last I heard that was mediation. So um, it, it is a hot mess. There's no other, listen, I use that term a lot, but that is the most appropriate term for what is happening right now with the prison system. And it is most unfortunate. And I think that uh, the politicians need to um, contact the, the whatever chief officer this falls under, prison and um, the acting prison director, and they need to have a sit down with them and you know have a chat about what's going on. And prisoners need to be listened to. So someone says on public holidays and weekends, the prison uh, does not have a doctor and nurse on duty up there. So they think it, uh, illnesses take the weekend off and take off public holidays. That don't make no sense. Uh, yeah, that don't make no sense. Oh. I don't know what to make of that. Um, that sounds like a hot mess. Leroy says they need someone up there. Um, PCR test the staff and prisoners. So it looks like they're getting, um, they're getting tested. Um, you know, they're, they're getting tested. So I, I don't know. Uh, we just need, we need a meeting of the minds. Why, why can't they have access to uh, medical assistance on a public holiday if it's required, you know, seems like to me, that's just a basic thing. Um, I don't know. Thank you, Damien. It was October, 1999. I knew it was around there. And a lot of them, a lot of the long serving prison inmates remember me. That's why they keep calling me Catron because my, um, ex-husband used to work well he's deceased he used to work at the prison uh david so a lot of them know katron as i guess you know they would remember him from from being there um and you know he always believed uh in his role as a prison officer that people should be treated humanely you know some of them are in there for different types of offenses but uh you don't lock someone up and then treat them like an animal although some of them have done things that are animal-like and very, very egregious towards members of our community, um, knowing that eventually they'll be let back out on us all. There's some reform and rehabilitation services that should be provided to them. I don't know what else to say about this, folks. Happy National Heroes Day, I guess. What a hot mess. Uh, tune in tomorrow. Um, I guess we can talk about it in the morning show a little bit more. We've got our uh, Monday Rewind show. We'll be on tomorrow. Uh, Miss Catherine... Ann Wilkes will also be on tomorrow morning as well. So make sure that you tune in for that. She'll be telling us a little bit about what's going on. Someone has just reminded me that um, the minister responsible for prison is Mr. Bernie Bush and the acting chief officer is Michael Ebanks and the acting director is Daniel Greaves. So those are the people who um, I suspect today should be uh, having a conversation. They should be working on this. So, yeah, no, Michelle, I completely get it. And I certainly, you know, think that there's a balance to be struck. So we're not saying here that prisoners should be getting, I don't believe in letting them out. That's what I said to that young man. I'm like, mm, I don't think you should come out. You're already going to only serve 60% anyway, which is, you know, that's, that's pretty good. There's some places in the world where you serve your entire sentence, not here in the Cayman Islands, right? So I think that the truth of the matter is um, we still have to recognize that these are people who most of them will be returning to our communities. So they have to pay their time. They do their time. 
And there has to be some degree of possible rehabilitation, depending on the offense. Obviously, sometimes that's going to be more plausible than not. But at the same time, Michelle, we shouldn't treat them like dogs in prison. There's only one category of inmate that I think should be at the end of the totem pole. And even them, even them have certain human rights. But y'all know who I'm talking about, those child molesters. I wish that they weren't even in prison, that they could get go to the gallows and be dealt with in that way. But a lot of y'all protecting them. We won't have that conversation again today, but I'm just saying. Um... So, you know, if they, if they, yeah, I mean, they are human beings. That's exactly the point, uh, Tosca. And if they have concerns and nobody's listening to them and their lives are potentially at risk, I don't think that that's right either. So, you know, we gotta, we gotta do right in certain situations. What a mess. All right, we'll see. Um, they finally were able to get through. I think they were saying that somebody was trying to reach me yesterday. I don't recall my phone ringing, but, um, you know, they were eventually able to get through today. Um, we'll see. We'll, we'll ask the questions. All we can do is ask the questions, agitate for uh, something to be done. You know, a lot of times, trust me when I tell you, the solution to these things can be so simple. It could be just a matter of trying to communicate with the inmates. How much of that is actually occurring? You know, when you're in a situation, you've lost your freedoms, rightfully so, if you've committed a crime. I don't have any qualms with that. But to be able to tell you, okay, in the middle of a pandemic, this is what's happening. Yes, we're having community spread, even within, within the prison. This is what's going on. That gives people a sense of relief to know that you guys have it under control. I think what's happening there right now is that they feel like no one has it under control and it's just a crazy mess and they're afraid. They're all getting scared. And you know what a caged animal does when it's afraid? Do I really need to tell y'all? So, um, you know, I think that something needs to be done. Mr. Greaves, Daniel, that's his first name. Have a meeting with these prisoners and talk to them about what's happening. Give them access to medical care. That's the bare minimum. Okay. All right, Ms. Moya, thank you very much. Uh, Dwayne, Virtuous, uh, thank you guys for tuning in today. Um, it wasn't a planned thing. They called. They said they wanted their grievances heard, and they wanted to go live. I said, all right. You know, as you can see, um, they were all respectful and just expressing how they feel. Um, I didn't want to get into like any individual cases because of course we don't know the ins and outs of that type of situation. Um, but, uh, you know, we at least hopefully gave them some degree of an outlet today that will help to calm the situation down a little bit. Cause I think they recognize that once, once we're notified, once the public hears what's going on, uh, the powers that be will try to pay attention. So already look at that. I'm getting, um, confirmation right now that um, from the HSA that they're now in communication with Danny Greaves and he said that the nurses and doctors have been excellent support and he's not aware of any medications that they need that have not been provided, but he's on site to see what's happening. Sounds like something's happening on the communication front. So we'll get to the bottom of it. I know that the powers that be in relation to this will certainly keep me updated. Um, and I'll keep you guys updated. Tune in tomorrow morning, folks, 7.30. Have a blessed the rest of your um, Heroes Day holiday. Be safe out there. And thanks again. Um, thank you, James. Thank you, Tosca. Appreciate it. All right, folks. Yeah, we'll definitely keep you guys updated. Have a good afternoon.